The Prodigal Son. Sadly, most Christians today believe that the parable of the prodigal son is talking about just a son who lived with a dad who was a sinner and left home as a sinner, continued to sin, and came home and was saved. Or they think it's just a son who left home and came back home again. They think it's just a really cool story in the Bible. A little 411 for you, as always. A little King James Version Bible 411. No, you guys have got it dead wrong and spiritually dead eternally spiritually dead wrong let's get the king james bible out let's read about the prodigal son i won't read the whole part but i'm going to read the part where we get uh towards the end and he went and joined himself to a citizen in that country and he sent him into his his fields to feed swine and he would have fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and yet I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he rose and came unto his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had great compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. <coughs> For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And he began... To be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called unto the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto them, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answered, said to his father, Lo! These many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, and hast killed with him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. I was meet that we should make merry, and be glad for this thy brother, and was dead, and is alive again, and was lost and is found. We're going back to the very beginning anyways. I want to cover this first part too, starting with verse 11. Jesus said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And we had spent all those, all there arose a mighty famine in the land, where he began to be in want. Okay, so this prodigal son is always, just like the, the parable of the, of the sower and the parable of the, of, of the tree that does not bear good fruit, exact same thing we're talking about here. Jesus Christ is talking about a Christian. And the prodigal son, Jesus Christ is talking about a Christian. Okay, a Christian left home, asked for his inheritance, went out of the world, started living sit with sinfully, with prostitutes and, and blowing his money on gambling and drinking and, and doing all the things the Bible says you can't do and still get to heaven. When he found out that he was in need and he lost all he's had, he came. He, he, he said, hey, at my father's house, at least I can be a slave and eat. I won't be going hungry and starving and trying to beg eating husks from the pig pen. And he went home and on the way home, his father saw him and was so, was so moved that he ran out to greet him and they killed the fatted calf and had a huge party. But his brother asked his father, why did you do this? He didn't say to my brother. He said to your son. He, he didn't say it was his brother. He was, he was angry at the father. And the father said, all I have is yours. It's always there for you. This son was lost and he's found. He's come home again. Jesus Christ is talking about every Christian who sins, goes out into the world, becomes a Christian, gets saved by the blood of Jesus, lives for Jesus Christ, then start sinning, 
going out into the world, living the, the, the so-called good life that sinners live, which is a life to hell. There's nothing good about it. And when they come back and want to repent, when they, get, when they reach rock bottom and decide, you know, I just can't make it anymore. I need to fall on my knees and beg Jesus to save me and forgive me. He'll come back. He will run to them and meet them and embrace them and love on them and take them back into the home and have a celebration in heaven. Kill the fatted calf. He was lost. Now he was found. He was gone. He's returned home. The prodigal has returned home. The man who was once saved backslid so he was no longer saved, lived out in the world, was no longer saved, came back home, embraced the father, asked him for his forgiveness, and was saved once again, restored that relationship with his father. See, once saved, always saved, cheap grace peddlers, you guys are just so, so spiritually blind. You're spiritually ignorant. You're spiritually dead. You're extinct. Spiritually dead. You're clueless as to what the Holy Bible says. You want to just pick and choose your little Calvinistic things and things that you've picked up from the from parts of the Baptist church. And, you know, you guys are just, like I said, you're dead wrong. You're spiritually dead wrong. You need to start picking up your Holy Bible and start reading what actually says about repenting of sin after we're saved. Jesus Christ did die on the cross for all of our sins, past and present, whoop, only. Sins after, we commit after being saved, are not forgiven unless we repent and ask Jesus Christ sincerely to forgive us of those sins. And he'll be good, glad to do that for us. Okay, the Bible says it over and 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 over again. Get your concordance and start looking it up. If you want an easier way, Google this name, Dan Corner. D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R-O-S-A-S, -E or Once Saved, Always Saved. I'm only endorsing Dan Corner's Once Saved, Always Saved portion of his site. He's got lots of other things. I'm only focusing on the Once Saved, Always Saved. He gets all those scriptures from the Bible. There might be hundreds of them. Puts them in one place. Shows them to you. And if you can read those, Once Saved, Always Saved, Cheap Grace People, Joseph Prince, uh, Slaves and Joseph Prince, Cult Members, where he's your God with the little G, and all the other Cheap Grace Peddlers, if you can read what the Bible says over and 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 over again and still say it's not true, then you call God a liar. You call the Holy Bible a book of lies and woe, woe, woe unto you. Get your King James Bible. Open it up to Luke chapter 15. Start at verse 11. Read down to verse 32. Read the story of the prodigal son. Not through hell goggles. Pull your hell goggles off. Put on Holy Spirit vision. Start reading the Bible the way it was written and then you'll understand what Jesus is saying. He's welcoming back a Christian who is backslidden and is now repentant of his backslidden state, of his living in sin and iniquity. He's back home with Jesus Christ again. Now he's ready to go to heaven once again, where before he was heading to hell. Basic stuff, my friends. This is, this is, this is Bible, King James Version Bible 101. If you can't figure this out, you can't figure anything out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please help people, Christians, to understand what the prodigal son means, and, and help the once saved, always saved, cheap grace peddlers, the, the liars, to just stop it and read your Bible the way it was written, the holy book, the holy word of God, and have them understand what it means. And just and just have them, don't give them any peace, Jesus, any comfort, any satisfaction, any joy, any happiness in their life. Rebuke them, correct them, teach them, convict them, hound them until they fall on their knees and repent and, and stop being stubborn and stop believing the lie that leads to hell. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you watch this video, my friends, and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, I believe you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me my sins, Jesus. Please come into my heart. Wash my heart. Make it white as snow. Live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. But praying, the sinner's prayer is just the beginning, my friends. Salvation is a lifelong process. Only ends when you're raptured or when you die. Get your King James Bible. Go out and buy you one. Read it every day. It's your food. It's your water. It's the Word of God. Pray to Jesus Christ, your new best friend, every day. Get water baptized. Pray to be sanctified, head to toe by the Holy Spirit. Take this King James Bible and find you a good church to worship at and open it. And when the preacher starts preaching, start going through this Bible. And if what he says doesn't match this, close your Bible, get up and walk out and never come back in that church again. It's a bad place. Find a church that preaches what the King James Bible says. 
If you have questions or you want to pray or talk to me, send me a message. I promise I'll always get back with you. I'm really busy with a lot of ministries. I'll always get back with you. If you have a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, a love, anyone, a loved one that needs Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in their lives. If you're sick, you have a sick friend, family member, neighbor, co-worker, loved one, a sick pet. If you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, whatever your need may be. You want someone to pray with you, someone that believes. Send me an inbox, a private message. I would love to pray with you. God gave me the gift of faith when I prayed. Nothing on my own, he gave it to me. Praise the Lord. I have mustard seed faith now. And when I pray for you, I'll pray believing in my heart. I'll pray speaking with my mouth, believing. And I know God will answer all, your, all my prayers if I pray in his holy will. He answers prayers, performs miracles all the time through my life, my friends, through my faith and belief, all to the glory of God. Never Paul Kidd. Thanks for watching this video, but please share the link to this, vid to this video, to this channel, to other videos that you like here with friends, neighbors, co-workers, with loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere. Drop it in a, in a, on a post online. Plant the seed and walk away and let God water it so it can grow. We have to get the word out to people the way it's written in the Holy Bible. Most pastors are gutless. They don't have a spine. They're invertebrates. They won't, they won't preach the word anymore. I will. The Holy Spirit gave me a mandate. He said, Paul Kidd, I know you know you're a slave. I know you know you're the very least in the kingdom of God. I know you know you're a tiny fish in a huge pond, so I can use you. You get on there on YouTube, you preach the word the way it's written, or you don't preach it at all. That's all I can do. All for the glory of God, never mind. But people have to hear what the word of God says. They can be saved, sanctified. They can repent of sin and iniquity. They can get off the sidelines and reap the harvest. They can have miracles happen in their lives. So they can carry on. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you.